large ocean states of the Pacific are taking the lead in climate action. The Pacific contributes 0.14% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions, but is one of the most climate vulnerable regions. Despite this vulnerability, the Pacific Island countries have made ambitious mitigation commitments under the Paris Agreement through their nationally determined contributions, aka their climate plans. Pacific NDCs embody country efforts in targeting sustainable actions to reduce national emissions and adapt to impacts of climate change, typically in five to ten year periods. To support Pacific leaders in this critical plan, the Regional Pacific NDC Hub was launched in 2017 by COP23 President and Fijian Prime Minister Honorable Chosaya Vorengim Bainimarama. Working in contribution to the NDC partnership, the Hub is a unique regional multi-partner facility mandated by Pacific leaders and owned by the Pacific Island countries. The role of the NDC Hub specifically is to allow for NDC policy and planning for each individual island, so be able to develop an understanding of the enabling environment for climate action in those individual islands, as well as be able to develop ground, uh, on the ground implementation of climate action projects that helps each island meet its NDC requirements that they have provided to the UNFCCC. And then finally, to develop the human capacity uh, to be able to train individuals on island to be able to do the MRV. That is very important in this uh, framework for transparency in climate action. 38 country requests are being serviced by the hub in 14 countries of the three sub-regions of the Pacific. All these requests being delivered by the hub's implementation partners, GIZ, the Global Green Growth Institute, SPREP, and the Pacific community where the hub is housed. In Fiji, the hub has supported the development of NDC investment plan and a set of project pipelines that gives Fiji clarity in terms of areas where investment are needed and which will help the country achieve its NDC target. Projects estimated at USD 2 billion have been identified in the NDC investment plan. Clean and alternative forms of energy is a common aspiration of Pacific nations as laid out in their NDCs. The NDC Hub is assisting Pacific countries scale up off-grid projects such as utilization of organic waste to generate biogas in Vanuatu. By encouraging use of biogas technology, the reliance on fuel wood and firewood for cooking can be reduced along with JG emissions from burning biomass. The switch to biomass systems also benefits traditional biomass uses such as women and children, allowing them more time for productive activities when they are not out there collecting firewood for cooking. Delivering on these commitments is critical for NDC implementation. Let's take Palau for example. The Pacific community as an implementing partner in the NDC hub has supported Palau in the development of energy efficiency regulations. The regulations set better standards for energy testing, energy performance, lighting and the labelling of appliances and other equipment imported to and sold in Palau. These seemingly small steps actually play an essential role in moving Pacific nations like Palau closer to their NDC targets and aid in the overall achievement of regional action in climate change supported by the NDC hub. With the launch of the 10-year strategy, the NDC Hub is more than ever committed to the full implementation of these climate plans of the Pacific Island countries. The NDC Hub Strategy 2030 demonstrates the hallmark of its commitment towards the Pacific region. The Strategy 2030 is the outcome of a very thorough consultative process. First of all, it draws on the critical needs expressed to us by our Pacific Island countries, either directly or through the steering committee. Secondly, we've asked the donors of the NDC Hub to actively comment. Thirdly, of course, the implementing partners of the Hub have been very actively involved in the development of the strategy. I'm talking about the SPC, SPREP, GGGI, my colleagues from GIZ, but also IRENA, UNDP and the NDC partnership. And last but not least, the strategy builds upon the experiences made by the NDC Hub in the first two phases, our lessons learned, our best practices. 
Our work is guided by a number of important guiding principles. For example, our work needs to align to climate science as well as the national development agenda of Pacific Island countries. We also need to ensure that our work promotes gender equality and empowerment of people. We also need to ensure that the work you know, fosters national ownership and it actually enables Pacific Island countries to build back better from the COVID-19 pandemic. Between 2020 and 2030, this decade is important for climate action uh, because the Pacific region cannot lag. We, we cannot fall behind in our commitments, not because there are commitments, even though we do not produce more emissions than others, but because we need to, we need to be in the forefront of identifying what this climate crisis is doing to our individual islands, uh, and especially to be able to meet our commitments within the Paris Agreement. Uh, if you look at individual islands, we may not necessarily have the resources because of our environmental constraints, our population constraints, our technological constraints does not allow us to be able to meet those requirements that we put into our NDCs. Since 2018, the hub has been generously supported by the governments of Germany, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. We're two years into the regional Pacific NDC hub and, and we've seen so much development uh, on each individual islands, but we also see further need uh, to come to the future. The strategic blueprint for NDC implementation is key to continue this tremendous progress in climate action in the region. Climate finance, especially new and additional finance, is required to transform the Pacific Island countries into low carbon and climate resilient states. The strategy 2030 of the Pacific NDC hub in that essence is clear. It lays out the hub's vision for the Pacific, the vision for sustainability, low carbon growth and development, and climate resilience. But this long-term plan can only come to fruition with deepened collaboration and partnership with all stakeholders, with Pacific Island countries in the driving seat.